today I'm gonna give you guys a tour on one of the first ever built construction single family home with two ADUs. I haven't seen anything so far in Windsor around surrounding Windsor so this is the first project that built by Clark Galley an agent in my team who is crushing it in the ADU area of construction so are you guys ready to check out the tour and find out more details about this project let's go Namaskar, welcome back to my channel. This is Aditya Soma. And like I mentioned, today I'm here with uh, Clark Halley. Clark, first of all, thank you so much, man. I'm really excited to find more details about this one. So you guys are the first one to build this in Windsor? Yes, we are actually the first ones to build a detached accessory dwelling unit in Windsor. And I guess this is the first new build of a yeah, a single family home with two ADUs, first one here. Yeah, so first of all, like for those who don't understand what this is, technically it's a three triplex, right? Technically triplex, there's three hydrometers for this property. Yeah, but why did you guys choose to do this ADUs instead of like triplex? So it's really funny kind of the technical behind a triplex or an ADU. In my opinion, there's a single family home, there's a unit on the top, there's a unit in the back, there's three total units, three hydrometers, three kitchens, three bathrooms. So for all intents and purposes, it is three units, but under the ADU bylaws, you can build them on any residential lot in the city. You do not need RD 2.1, you do not need RD 2.2, it could be any residential zoning, and you can put this structure on any residential lot. Yeah, so that's a cool part. Like the biggest thing is, yeah, especially within the city, we see a lot of residential lots, not like multifamily lots. Yeah. And also like a lot of single families have a backyard, have an opportunity to do a basement or on the top. So that's the reason why ADUs are getting popular and that's the reason. Yeah. So what is the square footage of this uh, ADUs? Yeah, so this one, we were kind of testing out kind of new innovative construction uh, kind of behind the builds that we're doing with NC Capital. So this is actually all modular builds. You can go to our YouTube channel, the NC Capital, yeah. and you can see us craning in each piece of this property into place. Uh, so with the modular builds, uh, this one is 400. 31 square feet for each unit. 431. 431. So how many bedrooms each? So it is one bedroom for each unit. Yeah, for 431. It'd be tough to get to. It'd be so, tough to get to. I'm curious to see inside because how the a 431 square feet look like. Yeah, no, we have a good architect that's managed to make it uh, feel a lot more than that. When I ask people what do they estimate, I usually get around 600 square feet. Yeah. Just take me back to this modular homes. Like, what do you mean? Why did you guys do the modular home style? Like, what's the difference between the regular construction and the modular? Yeah, so with modular homes, it's really all about speed of construction and finding efficiency. When you build inside of a warehouse, all of your materials are there, all of your supplies are right there on site. You can weather dependent, you know, rain or snow or sun or shine, build inside the warehouse, temperate controlled environment, and just have a lot more efficiencies in the construction process than building outside. Yeah. Uh, so speed, efficiency, and cost is what we're really trying to drill, drill down with the uh, modular builds. So basically what you're saying is you're, you're building most of the part inside a factory instead of on the ground. Yeah, so we built the framing, insulation, rough and electrical, drywall it, and yes, yeah, so we do a lot of it basically inside the warehouse, putting on a shipping container bed, bring it here, and then crane them into place. So on, you can see our YouTube videos, but basically it goes from foundation to siding so the, whole, the whole house <laughs> in about eight hours. It's, it's like uh, magic. <laughs> <laughs> the time lapses are really cool. But uh, what's the timeline? Like, you know, I know you guys like built from scratch, right? On this one? Yes, this one, uh, I think we put in, I think it was in January. Started in January, actually putting like, foundations yeah, in. Uh, in January, there's nothing in there. January, it was just a dirt field here. Okay. So less than four months, we basically built and completed three units here. And this okay. is our first one. Hopefully we get timelines and everything down even more, but so uh, yeah. Pretty much four months to finish the whole complete project. Complete project. How about the permit process? What's the timeline for the permit? This one, I think was about 180 days for the permit. 180 days. 140 so, to 180. We're, we have a lot of permits going on. I think this one is around 140 to 180. Yeah, again, that's the thing, right? Like with the city, they are taking quite long for the permits. Hopefully they will slow down, uh, at least reduce the timeline because that's what they're talking. They want to help new builds to get more new builds in the city. Hopefully we'll get that help. But um, you know, now, first of all, tell us a little bit more about this lot because this is right in the middle of the city. How mm -hmm. did you find this lot? Yeah, so it's pretty interesting. I love land. I think there's so much opportunity with lands and, and zoning in a lot of cities. And with this one, I actually purchased this home right here um, that stretched across the span here. So I noticed that the lot frontage was 59 feet and the zoning was RD 1.3, which actually allows for 30 feet of frontage. So I was like, okay, we're one foot shy of being able to sever this thing. Uh, I came through the property, got up my measuring tape, went from the fence to the fence. I was like, yep, we can probably cut it right down the middle here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, went through the whole severance process. Um, bought this house, you know, renovated a bit. 
uh, sold, sold that one, <laughs> sold that one back on the market, and got this lot for uh, for a very great price. I would say pretty much free, I assume. Close to free. Were... <laughs> Close to free. <laughs> so that's that's a cool thing, right? Like you need to know what's the bylaw, right? Like mm -hmm. if my understanding is correct, you knew what does the zone mean yeah. and how what's the requirement. Do, do you have to go through any minor variants too because you had one feet we shot? We did. <laughs> so what was the process for that? Yeah, so the, usually there's some ways you can kind of get around that stuff. But with this one, yeah, we did have to go through the whole minor variance process. Uh, so you get the minor variance application from the city, um, submit it to the city, and then you go ahead and counsel. Uh, you know, they review my application with, you know, a few other applications during council. Uh, people are applying for crazy things. It's great <laughs> meetings to be a part of. I definitely recommend if you have some time, check out these city meetings. They, yeah. There's some crazy stuff happening even before it kind of hits the news that you get to see there. But uh, but yeah, no, they looked at mine and said, one foot shy, sure, go ahead. It was a pretty, so <laughs> pretty it, easy It was process. not really like a long process. Um, That process probably Is, is about, it called like minor variance? Yeah, it's minor variance. Okay, yeah. okay. I think that took about uh, two to three months, that one. Got it. So just two to three months, so you got the minor variance and then you got the severance. How long does the severance take? Uh, it's kind of the same time frame. So severance, minor variance process, is minor variance to sever. So it was kind of lumped in the same time frame there. So, yeah, exactly. All three. Uh, so you'll need a survey. Um, so you need a real property survey. Well, you can what. So you kind of draw exactly where you want to slice. And then, so you that. Uh, survey, I think, is about three grand or so from any yeah, survey yeah. company in the city. Uh, then you'll go for a minor variance application. I believe that's about 2500 bucks. Okay, um, not bad. And then some employer fees to make the transfer happen. So that's about like a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So probably like for seven grand, eight grand, you will be able to get seven Yeah, yeah, the high end, yeah. That's the thing, right? Like if, if you are looking to do some new goals, like that's a cool idea, look for something. And then technically now you got the land for free, but if you have to buy the same lot, like I bought a lot exactly similar size. I paid 200 grand, close to 200 grand, and actually not even same neighborhood. This is actually much better neighborhood than mine. So that's a cool idea. So I'm excited to see the inside, man. So yeah, let's take a look. So just give us an idea, like what layout of each unit and we'll go into one or two units. Yeah, so the interesting thing about, again, being modular, um, we almost kind of design it uh, in the two sections of the house, right? Because we can't have a bathroom in the middle, right? Because you can't just like split a bathroom in half and ship it. Yep. Um, so basically all the bathroom and living space are gonna be on the left. Um, the living in the kitchen is gonna be on the right. It's the exact same units all three across. Um, you know, a factory line, basic building the warehouse. So, just from looking at it, because those two buildings look the same size. Yes, they're the exact same. So, but uh, you have one unit on the main floor here, yeah. Yeah. and the other unit on top. Yes. And there you have a garage, double car garage, yeah. and on top of the unit. Yes. So just you're replacing this unit there with the garage. Exactly. Yeah. So um, is there a foundation at all for this one? Uh, for this one, we're actually going with helical piles, yes. What does it mean? Like, is it like pillar post? Um, yeah, it's like a step up from pillar and post. They're basically screws that get put into the ground. Um, you drill them like 10, 15 feet to the ground. Um, it's very common in coastal regions like California, Nova Scotia. Um, it's a lot more common around there uh, than here. But uh, yeah, that's what we did for here because again, we're all about costs. What is the most cost effective way you can build a house in today's market um, and that, uh, that's yeah, what you do. It. That's pretty good. So pretty much it's like an up and down duplex with another uh, single family home in the back with a garage. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's pretty cool. Okay. So going to the completed one. Okay. Perfect. So another thing I'm noticing, Clark, what are those units? Yeah. So it's the uh, Mitsubishi uh, air handling units. Okay. Um, Basically, we don't run gas lines to the properties. Okay, so it's all uh, heat pumps. Yes, they're all heat pumps, exactly. Um, they're much more common in Europe. I'm seeing them pop up more and more in Windsor. Okay. Um, people converting attics units, adding additional versions up there, they use these units. Uh, again, it's all about cost and efficiency here. Yeah, because and, you know, it's, uh, you, now you don't need the duct work. Yep. And now you don't need extra space for putting the furnace. So it makes sense. Or even running the gas line without uh, breaking attachment. Okay, so this is exactly the same. 
the exact same unit, yeah. Just a completed, nice, pretty cute uh, subway tile there, quartz stamp top. Yeah, and these did nice stainless steel appliances. I don't know what else to say, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, no, you can customize a lot of it too, right? Like the layout of it is the same for all of our builds. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't know, have to change like, the countertop, change like, the flooring, change like, the yeah. lighting, all that stuff. You can kind of, uh, kind of customize yourself. Yeah, especially for investment property, right? Like, mm -hmm. A tenant would definitely would appreciate this kind of features. This is way more than enough for it. In my opinion, the tenant would very much appreciate the dishwasher and yeah. the washer and dryer. Yeah. But on top of all the nice fixtures you get, um, just having those two appliances, in my opinion, is almost standard for new builds you have to have. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And because yeah. a lot of old buildings in Windsor, right? Like they don't have the dishwasher and uh, washer and dryer. They have yeah. to go down to maybe a common area for a washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. um, dishwasher, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fact we can squeeze all that in and still feel big in the space is mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. Okay, so here what you mean by the washroom completed one? Yeah, feel free to take a look. Okay. Oh, here, look at this. I'm tiny. And then you can see the dishwasher. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> washer and dryer. That's pretty cute, man. I never knew this is a thing. So why not you find this one as well? Yeah, right that, well, we'll work on that one, we'll work on that one. That's <laughs> our sort of future idea. Yeah, pretty standard and nice, durable material that you guys used here that personally I like it. Because this goes for like 10, 15 years. The shower so, inserts? Yeah, shower inserts. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely like those more for rentals. Yeah, for rentals, especially like maybe I don't, I might not use it for my personal use, but yeah, yeah it's pretty, for, pretty for, solid. For rentals, I definitely choose that. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, man. Thank you so much, uh, Kirk. Definitely, you know, appreciate for yeah, giving us the tour. Uh, guys, it, this might go onto the market pretty soon. So if you would, would like to get a tour before even going onto the market, give a call to Clark. And if anyone interested in ADUs, where they can reach out to you? What's the best place to reach out to you? Yeah, NC Capital. Uh, we have an Instagram, we have YouTube. Uh, I'll try to put all those links in the description. Yeah, put it in the description there. Uh, Instagram, we post a lot on there. Uh, so if you want to follow our process, you know, almost daily we post on there, uh, kind of following our builds. Uh, give us a follow and take a look. Yeah, so thank you so much, man. We'll catch up on the next video. Until then, check out the other videos. See you guys later. Thanks.